Hello, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kermigato. I'm back again. I had to check on Rich. He kept calling in. We are back. Oh, my goodness. Get ready as we go into the next part. And it is Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon 5. So, let's go to Song of Solomon 5 and get into the place returning to where she is being taunted by the watchmen that are pulling her mantle, tearing it off, and they are beating her. Oh my goodness, saints. It is going to be so amazing. Are you ready? Now, let me get to this part where I read just before it, like I did with the last, bro uh, the last broadcast, not the very last one I did, but the one last week, if you haven't seen that. And so we're going to return to it. And here we go, Song of Solomon 5, verse 7. The watchmen who go about the city found me. They struck me. They wounded me. The keepers of the walls, they took my veil and my mantle from me. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell him that I am sick from love, simply sick to be with him, now, let me read that again. So, the watchmen, they're going about the city, and they're beating her, and they're wounding her, and they're ripping her mantle off of her. Now, remember, this comes after chapter 4, where it's written, she comes from the lion's den and from the leopards. She's coming as one from Lebanon, which is white as snow and transported in the heart. Amen. The watchmen who go about the city, they found me. They struck me. They wounded me. The keepers of the walls, they took my veil and my mantle from me. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell him that I am sick with love, simply sick to be with him. So, saints, oh my goodness, you were fixing to see the open heaven. We are fixing to see the open heaven. So if you haven't just seen the broadcast that I had to get off of before coming to this, because I had to check on Rich real quick. Oh my goodness. God had me talking about how I've been in this open heaven as he's cut critical voices off of me. This is what we're about to see with the Shulamite. She is having this open heaven experience. All of hell is breaking loose around her. But all she sees is her first love, her beloved. Her eyes are fixed. She's walking in balance in the power of love. And she's going to walk in the authority thereof. Thank you, Jesus, of the kingdom of heaven in Jesus' name. Woo! Oh, my goodness. She's going to become Song of Solomon 6, which I've written about in many of my books, a terrible bannered army. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. The watchman, Song of Solomon 5, verse 7, Amplified Classic. The watchmen who go about the city found me. They struck me. They wounded me. The keepers of the walls took my veil and mantle from me. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell him that I'm sick from love, simply sick to be with him. What is your beloved? More than any other beloved, another beloved. Now, this is them taunting her. What is your beloved more than another beloved? Oh, you fairest among women taunted the ladies. What is your beloved more than another beloved that you should give us such a charge? So, they've stripped her. They've beaten her. She's got bruises. She looks like a rag, tag, doll. A mess. But her eyes are not fixed on that. Her eyes are fixed on her beloved. And her beloved, that love washes over her. And that love is displayed in her members. Hallelujah. As she is lifted up into this space that all of a sudden she's transported. And she sees him in the supernatural in the invisible, in her heart, the way that her heart sees him. And this is her description of him. She said, my beloved is fair and ruddy, the chief among 10,000. His head is as precious as the finest gold. 
His locks are curly and bushy and black as a raven. His eyes are like doves beside the water brooks bathed in milk and fitly set. His cheeks are like bed of spices or balsam, like banks of sweet herbs yielding fragrance. His lips are like blood red anemones, lilies distilling their sweet scented myrrh. His hands are like rods of gold set with nails of beryl or topaz. His body is a figure of bright ivory with veins of sapphires. His legs are like strong and steady pillars of marble set upon bases of fine gold. His appearance is like Lebanon, excellent, stately, majestic as cedars. His voice and speech are exceedingly sweet. She's feeling love. She's seeing how her lover sees her. This is the voice of love right here. Verse 16, his voice and speech are exceedingly sweet. Yes, he is altogether lovely. The whole of him delights and is precious. This is my beloved. This is my friend. Oh, daughters of Jerusalem, do you see this? Return to your first love. Return to friendship with God. This is exactly what Job had to do. He had to wake up. He had to open his spiritual eyes. Before I knew you, Job 42, 5, in my hearing, but now I see you. Now I wake up. What's the most important thing to me, God, is friendship with Christ. Friendship with you, God. That is the most important thing. This is the open heaven. The voice of the enemy cannot get in that space. You will not hear the stranger's voice. You will not hear critical voices. You will only hear the voice of the good shepherd, not the bad shepherd, not the, the critical shepherd. You will hear the voice of the good shepherd. Woo! Hallelujah. Y'all, I'm telling you, it has been an open heaven. An open heaven. Has the storm passed? No, it's still going on. But guess what? I don't feel it. I am ravished, raptured, captivated. All of my attention in the love of my beloved and how he loves me. And guess what? That's how I see others. And the critical voices aren't in, in my space. They're not in me where everything isn't a crisis anymore. It's not a storm. I've gotten out of it. I'm in the eye. I am the apple. You are the apple. Zachariah 4, 8 of God's eye. And like my ministry, www.godsfirewall.com, which my personalized tag, Zachariah 2, 5, is from that ministry since I've had since 2010, God's Firewall. God will be a wall of fire around about you. He will be the glory in the midst of you. In Jesus' name. Woo! Listen, the women heard that, and I don't have to go on to Song of Solomon 6, but they saw that love in her, and it won all of them to that love. So how do you deal with critical voices in your life? If you're able, you cut them off. If you're able... You add distance between you. If you're blessed like me, they've rejected you. So it makes it easy. And you don't have to be around it. And you don't, and you wake up and you realize I'm not this evil person. I'm not this horrible, evil person that everybody has to be protected from. Oh, I am, I am of my beloveds and he loves me. And you wake up to who you are. And your attention is not on the criticism, the strife, the bitterness of others. Your attention is on the love of God. It is the open heaven. Woo! Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. I can't help but think of Isaiah. Let me see if I can get to that real quick. Isaiah. Hold on one second. Isaiah. Let me see. I think it's 64, but let me make sure. Let me make sure before I say it. <clears throat> yeah. Isaiah 64 verse 1. I thought it was, but I just want to double check. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and that you would come down 
that the mountains might quake and flow down at your presence. That, saints, is what it feels like. That, saints, is what it feels like when your heart is fixed on friendship with God and love of God. Amen. So let me give you a couple scriptures as we end here. First, there is Mark 5, 44, where Jesus said, I say unto you, and this is a King James right here, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. So, saints, this is what you're to do. You're to bless and keep blessing. You're to not look at or think or dwell on what others are doing to you. You are to keep your eyes fixed on your beloved, on your friendship with God and feed that, your first love. Pray and read the word. Pray and read the word. Fix your eyes on your beloved, your first love. Pray and read the Bible and get all of your attention off of critical voices. Get all of your attention off of it and just pray and bless. Pray and bless. Be in the shadow of the Almighty. Pray and bless. Be in the shadow of the Almighty. Pray and bless. Saints, I'm telling you because the enemy will get you focused on critical voices and you will beat yourself up. Listen, what he has given me for chapter 7, Trauma, the Curse, and a modality of handling and navigating that into your healing, I'm telling you, saints, it is mind-blowing. It is mind-blowing. I've done it with personal coaching clients. I've worked with a family member, family members, and I've worked on myself, and this is bulletproof. It works. No, no ifs, ands, or buts. It works. It's solid. And I'm telling you, saints, when others are persecuting you, you can't think about it. You have to keep your eyes on your friendship with God, your love with God, and you have to be full of love, and you have to bless them. You have to love them. You have to bless them and love them. Bless them and love them. It's interesting because the other day, Friday, I took a picture of it and I put it up a couple days late on uh, a, a day later on Facebook. It was 22 Aloha. Now, Bree is someone very dear to me, Bree Singleton, and she's in Hawaii. And I talk to her sometimes weekly lately. And I was speaking with her one day and told her I saw a personalized tag, Aloha. And it was just regular Aloha. I don't think it was the 22 Aloha. And for me, 22 is open door. Our ministry used to be 22 is 22 for Isaiah 22, 22, the key of David that opens the door and no man can shut. And Jesus has the key of David and he opens the door that no man can shut. Amen. And so it was 22. So I saw, I thought of open door, Aloha. And Bree said over there in Hawaii where she lives, she said, Aloha means always love over hate, always, always love over hate, always. And I thought that was amazing. And I thought, oh my goodness, that is so cool because it's an open door to always love over hate, always for those that love, for those that overcome those that persecute them. And then yesterday on my birthday, we were going to go to Shrimp Basket. They were closed. So we went to Cajun Steamer for brunch. They were still having brunch. And on the way over there, I saw a personalized tag, O-P-N-D-O-R, for, and it was a realtor's tag for open door. And I just wanted to say, yes, God, an open door for those that love. It is an open heaven where Jesus says, I've opened a door wide open. Thank you, Katie, that no man can shut. He's opened a door for those that walk in love. Who can ascend? Matthew 23, um, uh, Psalm 23, Psalm 24, 3 and 4. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? He that has clean hands and a pure heart that has not lifted his heart up to an idol or sworn by his lips anything false. Y'all, this is pure love. Now, the last thing I'm going to read to you is Exodus 14, verses 13 and 14. So, critical voices, cut them off if they reject. That's even better. Their rejection is God's protection. Their rejection is God's favor. 
Ver Exodus 14, 13 and 14, Amplified Classic. Moses, so you bless them, Mat, uh, Mark 4, let me get that verse again, Matthew 5, 44. Matthew 5, 44. And then Exodus 14, 13 and 14. Moses told the people, fear not, stand still, firm, confident, undismayed, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians you have seen today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace and remain at rest. Now, let me read that one more time, and then we'll end. Moses told the people, fear not, stand still, firm, confident, undismayed, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians you have seen today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace and remain at rest. So, saints, it's open heaven time. Cut off critical voices. Don't look at others negatively. If you're looking at others negatively, you've got a critical voice you haven't dealt with. And you're not going to be in this open heaven. If you're constantly criticizing people, saints, it is a trap of the enemy where that critical voice in you has now turned outward on others. Remember, others that criticize you have critical voices criticizing them. And so they have to criticize others to not feel so bad. So saints, if you've got critical voices, understand that if you're looking negatively at others, no matter what, no matter what, you've got a critical voice you need to deal with. And you're not going to see this open heaven. So, saints, we want to be in this open heaven. We want to be in God's presence. We want to be in this place that is so amazing with His love. Saints, be expectant, be hopeful, bless and pray, and leave the battle to the Lord. He will fight for you. You remain at peace and at rest under His shadow. Amen. God bless you. I love you. I hope you enjoyed all this critical voices teaching, send them to your friends, send them to pastors, send them to therapists. Oh my, it is absolutely amazing. I love you. God bless you. Have an amazing day.